Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope all of you are doing well. So in this video, I will be discussing about the functions of literary criticism. So let's begin. So the first function of literary criticism is judgment. So in its strict sense, criticism means judgment. The literary critic therefore is primarily an expert who uses his special faculty and training to examine the merits and defects of a piece of literary art or the work of a given author and to announce a verdict upon it. The primary function of a literary critic is to arrive at and pronounce a meaningful judgment of value. I.A. Richards says that to set up as a critic is to set up as a judge of value. So in this judgment, values are very important. The second function of literary criticism is evaluation. When a critic attempts to judge the value of a work of art or literature, he can be said to have evaluated the work. Evaluative, judicial or normative criticism attempts to judge the merits of literature in relation to literary, social, moral or other value system. According to Thomas Green Williams, he says that the function of a literary critic is the evaluation of what has been written in terms of a static principle appropriate to literature. So the third function of literary criticism is interpretation. If judgment be the real end of criticism, interpretation may be employed as a means to that end. According to Walter Pater, to feel the virtue of the poet or the painter, to disengage it, to set it forth, these are the three stages of critic's duty. Poetry is a criticism, interpretation of life. The chief function of criticism is to enlighten and stimulate by the proper interpretation of the works of literature. If a great poet makes us partakers of his larger sense of the meaning of life, a great critic may make us partakers of his larger sense of the meaning of literature. So another topic is the nature of criticism and in this topic there is subtopic that is criticism and creation. So to some people, criticism appear to be secondary, parasitic and inferior to creation. It is stated that the creative artist is personal and subjective, whereas a critic is impersonal, dispassionate and detached. Though the creative and critical faculties are logically distinct, psychologically they are interfused with each other. According to Scott James, the, the true critic is an ally of the artist. So a good critic has same interest at heart as the artist possesses. His never failing sympathy and intuitions quality or qualify him to speak on behalf of the artist. Alexander Pope beautifully says these born to judge as well as those to write. So another important subtopic is literary criticism and scientific accuracy. Critic like I.A. Richards and Professor Moulton aims at scientific accuracy and scientific impartiality in their literary criticism. According to D.H. Lawrence, criticism can never be a science. In first place, criticism is much too personal and secondly, it is concerned with values that science ignores. So criticism can never be science, it is much too personal. So that's all from my side. If you have any queries, you can ask me in the comment section. Please like, subscribe and share my channel. Thank you for watching.